Uh, we've called this uh, press conference to provide further advice in relation to developments with the, the weather event that we're currently experiencing. Uh, recent and um, most up-to-date forecasts indicate that we are likely to be uh, impacted by significant uh, developments in the weather with um, destructive winds potentially hitting the wider metropolitan area of Adelaide after travelling through Kangaroo Island. Warning messages have already gone out to Kangaroo Island informing that community of the potential for the weather event to uh, escalate and impact on that community. And we're now providing advice to the wider metropolitan uh, community of Adelaide, uh, recommending that people who are able to uh, leave work, those who are performing non-essential duties, should consider doing so and returning home. We're also recommending that uh, after school activities that are completely discretionary should be considered in terms of uh, cancelling those and children to be taken home. We're also recommending that people who have non-essential driving activities uh, consider not undertaking those activities and remaining off the road network. There is a strong likelihood that the winds and rain force that we are going to experience uh, could have significant impacts across the entire metropolitan area and bring into uh, question our capacity to immediately deal with those issues as they arise. Uh, we're seeking the community's cooperation in this regard uh, by keeping the road networks as free as possible and uh, minimising the use of triple zero unless uh, urgent circumstances exist. We're also uh, mindful of the fact that this forecast is uh, best endeavours in anticipating the likely trajectory of this weather event and there is potential that it will actually miss the wider metropolitan area. We don't feel that it's appropriate that we uh, take that chance that this event will miss the wider metropolitan area and for people to take precautionary measures now will enable them to travel home without risk of congestion and also ensure that people are not put at undue risk by travelling on the roads or being out and about at a time when we anticipate there could be significant wind events and significant rain events accompanying that. I'm now going to hand over to Paul Lanio from the Bureau who can give you some specifics about the particular weather event that we are anticipating at this point in time. And then Chris Beatty from the SES will talk about the, uh, the operational implications of the event that we are now anticipating. So Paul, over to you. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, quite a serious uh, situation developing. We've noticed winds across the, the Gulf waters increasing, across all Gulf waters, to gale force again. So we did have a, a bit of a lull. We're now seeing those winds increase. Those winds are increasing in response to a low pressure cell intensifying, developing as it approaches Kangaroo Island. Once it gets up to that sort of level, we then do expect it to, to shift off to the east. So with that intensification, we'll see further strengthening of the winds up towards storm force across uh, coastal waters through through the uh, lower parts of the Spencer Gulf and into Investigator Strait. As the low moves closer, and in fact uh, as it's already moving over uh, Kangaroo Island, uh, the, the lower York Peninsula, the Gulf Coasts and toward the Adelaide area, we do expect uh, increasing winds to affect land areas and we are looking at, uh, working on uh, upgrading our warning to include an area of destructive winds, so wind gusts uh, possibly up to 140 kilometres an hour. So that's uh, the, the entire state has a, a broader scale damaging wind area, but within that there's a smaller core closer to the low where it's possible we may see some destructive winds. In concert with those winds increasing, uh, as we've probably already seen across the Adelaide area, we've got a little bit of rain uh, intensifying, increasing, that will continue into this evening, so we'll see that rain intensify. Uh, we still expect uh, rainfall of 50 to 60 millimetres up through the Mount Lofty Ranges and 60 to 80 millimetres through the Mid-North. So not only winds but rainfall as well. The low pressures we've seen today and this secondary low have already caused uh, abnormally high tides. We've got uh, the, the astronomical tide peaking later this afternoon and during this evening and we have uh, warnings out for abnormally high tides as well. So we've got a triple effect of, of rain, wind, abnormally high tides, and then we've got flood warnings out already and likely to be out for all the, uh, the major rivers through the Adelaide metropolitan area. And we also have some flood warnings outside the metropolitan area, Light and Angus 
and uh, so to the north and both to the south of Adelaide. So very significant situation. So I might hand over to Chris to deal with operations. Yeah, thanks, Paul. But uh, if the, um, the weather as forecast does in fact uh, uh, realise um, its full potential, it will actually result in wind speeds that we haven't seen across broad areas of Adelaide before. Having said that, damaging winds have been experienced in uh, smaller and uh, confined locations. Uh, in 2014, in February, we did have a significant wind event that resulted in multiple trees down, power lines down, uh, road infrastructure damage in the Burnside and eastern suburbs area. Many residents of uh, Adelaide will recall that event and uh, if damaging winds are uh, realised across broad areas of the city, that's the sort of impact that we might expect to see. Now, whilst, whilst emergency service authorities are currently operating within existing resources and, uh, and we are well resourced, should this event uh, materialise, it is likely that our crews will be stretched beyond capacity. With that in mind, uh, I've had preliminary discussions with Victoria and operational planning has commenced for the deployment of additional resources to South Australia should that be realised. It is really important that uh, people take uh, these messages seriously and I'd uh, echo the Commissioner's comments that uh, if you are able to leave work early and uh, secure your family and property, do so. It would be good to, uh, to make your way home before we start to see these winds impact and we start to see uh, congestion on the roads, um, obstructions to the roads as uh, tree infrastructure is damaged and so on. It's, um, it's really important that uh, everybody be patient on the roads and show consideration to other drivers um, and also listen to the uh, directions of authorities both via uh, messages like this and on the radio but also for those personnel who are working in the field. Relief centres uh, are being established uh, in response to this event uh, in other impacted areas and the community can get more information via the SAPOL website, the SEFs website, Alert SA and the Emergency Service Broadcaster, the ABC. We might take questions. Please, just Sorry. Paul, with the what's the time you uh, the, the low is developing now, as we've seen, uh, gale force winds uh, across uh, coastal waters. So when will it hit? Well, I guess that's a, a question of uncertainty and, and the exact location of the low will, in fact, depend on whether it does hit Adelaide. But if the low gets into the right position, say tracking down across the, the bottom of the Fleuria Peninsula, we're probably looking uh, winds beginning to increase from, say, 6pm through to 9pm. And in that period, we'd, we'd be looking at the peak, peak winds through there. Um, speed of movement is going to make a difference as well, so I'd say keep up to date with the warnings and that will give you a good idea of when to expect the peak and also the changing expectation of peak. In terms of flood threats, um, what is the threat to Glenelg currently with the Paddle along the uh, waterway? So, yep, okay, Chris, good. No worries. Thank you. So we have had uh, reports that uh, the Padalawonga may breach its uh, banks with the inflow of waters down the uh, various creek systems. Um, at this stage we have crews on scene and uh, they are keeping a close eye on the situation. Um, as we've indicated throughout this event, uh, we've had significant rainfall throughout all catchments and we're continuing to see heavy showers impact the state in those catchments. Those showers will continue throughout today and into the evening as they abate hopefully through into Friday. So there is a, a strong risk of uh, a rapid creek rises and the potential that some of these systems will breach their banks uh, within the uh, urban creek systems and that includes the Padalawonga. Um, clearly if the uh, Padalawonga does breach its banks, we have experienced that before and we are under, you know, we're very clear about the potential impact uh, that that might bring. What is the advice to people in that area? So it's important that people maintain situational awareness, uh, stay abreast of any warnings, follow the directions of authorities, but also uh, prepare their properties for the potentiality that there may be uh, floodwaters that spill from that, uh, that catchment. Damage bill is obviously going to grow with the storm and the winds in Adelaide, but do you have any idea of what a damage bill to this point might look like? No, we've got uh, no idea at this stage. Can we, can we ask how wide the potential path of this weather system is? Uh, the potential uh, width of the, the, the damage path is probably a little bit difficult. Uh, across waters it will be of the order of perhaps 100 kilometres or so 
as we get into land, it'll, it'll be closer to the low itself. So we may be talking of the order of, say, 10 to 50 kilometres. Um, it's a developing situation, monitoring it very closely. As it moves across some of our observed areas, say Kangaroo Island, York Peninsula, where, where we have weather stations, we'll get a bit of a, a better idea of, of the extent of those uh, possibly destructive winds. Well, we have it's hard to predict. Do you think you can point out where it will be worst hit around the 6 to 9 pm time? Yeah, uh, the, the details of where we'll be worst hit will be described in the warning itself. So, so that's being crafted as we speak, so the, the warning will be put out. It'll be updated as, as need be. Um, the exact description uh, will be in that, that uh, text of the warning. So you, you, sure that. Well, we, we are saying Adelaide is at potential of being affected by these destructive winds, whether that's the northern suburbs, the southern suburbs, the centre, that's, that's not yet known. Sure. So So we have a low pressure cell around that western and northern flank mainly is where we expect the, uh, the, the, the uh, possibly destructive winds. So it's a narrow core within, uh, the, the, say, 50 kilometres or, or perhaps a little bit more of, of that low. So can I be more exact than that? Not really. What is the current situation in Clare? Is there an So Clare has experienced uh, a significant rise in the river system that, uh, that runs through that town. A number of the uh, bridges, uh, footbridges and roads uh, have been impacted. Uh, we understand that the town is at risk of isolation and the community has been warned. We do have emergency services on site and uh, we're maintaining you know, a watching brief as to uh, that event as it develops. Do you have an update on Brown Hill? At this stage, I've got no further information on Brown Hill Creek. Um, like all our urban uh, creek systems, it's uh, subject to rapid uh, water rises if we get sufficient rainfall uh, within the upper reaches you know, of the catchment there. Um, we did see a breakout of that system a fortnight ago, and uh, with the current uh, rainfalls that are uh, in the catchment and the rainfalls that we're expecting, there is uh, a possibility that we may see similar breakouts of that creek again. Are you aware of any um, we haven't been advised of any injuries of um, uh, members of the community at this stage. Uh, I can advise that a SES volunteer was injured uh, last night during operations. Uh, that member was transferred to uh, Flinders Hospital but has uh, subsequently been released and they were uh, minor injuries only. Um, a couple of questions for the no further update at this stage, um, but I will reinforce that uh, all indications at this point are that we haven't seen any particular increase in reported crime that would be associated with those sorts of activities, uh, which I think can be taken as a positive given the duration and extent of this particular incident that we've been managing, and I think that's a credit to the community generally. You've renewed a couple of warnings from last night about not driving if um, yes. unnecessary. And what did you think that people were like in heeding that message last night? Oh, the reality was that uh, I think the, the blackout uh, across the state did catch people unawares and uh, people were compelled to try and uh, travel home so we did see significant congestion on the road network and I think that's understandable. But what we also saw with that was uh, significant patience demonstrated by the driving public. Um, we didn't see any aggression, uh, we didn't see collisions uh, of any significant order and uh, as I say I think that's a credit to the driving community that they responded in that way. And the other thing we did detect was um, people heeded the warning to limit any non-essential travel so as soon as people were clearing the, the CBD and the, the metropolitan area we, we did see the road network free up. Uh, this evening we're asking for the same sort of cooperation and we're giving people advance notice that this weather event may impact on the metropolitan area and in, in the event that it does we'd like people to have the opportunity to travel home more freely and also to clear the road network as much as possible so in the event that we do have this particular uh, destructive wind and significant rainfall uh, our emergency services uh, can respond as quickly as they can and we're reducing the risk to people who are out and about. Commissioner, what's, what's your priority with our priority is the protection of life and uh, ensuring uh, from a policing point of view that we're able to support the other emergency services uh, to undertake their functions to respond where they're required to um, support that particular mission. And are you asking uh, officers uh, 
to stay back you extending shifts tonight? Uh, we're monitoring the situation at this point, and as we are stressing, you know, we're giving an advance notice of a forecast, and there is a potential that this may not impact the way we are anticipating. In the event that it does impact in that manner, we'll certainly be taking steps to ensure we have the appropriate resources to deal with this event as it unfolds. As uh, uh, Chris Beattie has indicated, uh, we have started uh, or commenced uh, discussions with uh, interstate counterparts to ensure that we have additional resources on standby in the event that they are required. Uh, but it is a, a monitoring situation at the moment and giving people as much notice as possible so they can take proactive steps to prepare for this and avoid uh, the risk of injury or harm. And we do stress to people that uh, property can be replaced, lives can't. So we don't want people to take unnecessary risks. Have we left the bring in police from interstate before? Uh, not to my uh, recent recollection. But we do have standing arrangements with uh, other jurisdictions, and I've already been in contact with commissioners from other jurisdictions. Off they're offering their uh, resources in the event that we need them. Uh, we have a, an excellent cooperative relationship, and if that's necessary, we'll certainly avail ourselves of that. Still on another matter, if you've got time, um, we understand Phil Newman has just pled guilty to driving without due care. Um, can you tell us if he's still employed by SACOL and whether you'll be reviewing his employment in light of today? I've answered questions about that today and I have to say that I'm quite disappointed that you'd bring up a matter like that in a particular notification that we're cho choosing to do today. Well, that's unfortunate, but I'm not answering questions about that at this point in time. I think Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.